Hey what's up everyone, I'm Dark Matter Tech, and here's a $1000 gaming PC build guide for summer of 2017. I did one in the past, but it's relatively outdated, so this will be the updated one. I did have to cut some corners, all for good reason though, but I've done enough talking so let's get into it starting with the CPU. For the CPU, we got the Ryzen 5 1600. Not the 1600X, which is like the older brother, but this one still performs. It's armed with 6 cores and 12 threads, and SMT, or simultaneous multi-threading, which for sake of argument is like hyper-threading. In terms of clock speeds, you're working a base clock of 3.2GHz and a turbo of 36 And yes, it is overclockable if you were into that. Talking performance is roughly on par with i5 equivalents such as a 7600K, and in some cases edging them out. Also, with those 6 cores, it should be better for professional and content creation uses. This processor does run the AM4 motherboard, so it supports DDR4 RAM and has a TDP of 65 watts. For about $200, you were getting one hell of a processor. Moving on to the motherboard, I picked up the MSI B350M Pro-VDH. This one is kind of similar to the B350M Gaming Pro model, just with a different PCIe layout and color scheme. Personally though, I think this one is better, and it is $5 cheaper at $75 versus $80. Anyways, this is a budget board, so don't raise your expectations too much. It'll get the job done, and allow for some flexibility in some areas. MSI is a reliable motherboard manufacturer, and their BIOS has a more simplistic mode for first-time builders. You can overclock on it since it is a B250 motherboard, and it has 4 RAM slots up to 64GB if you need it. Moving on, it has 8 USB ports on the rear I.O., with half of them being USB 3.1 Type-A, and the other half being USB 2.0. You also get an M.2 slot and two chassis fan headers. Apart from that, it is black with a hint of silver and a micro ATX board so it has a smaller size, but compared to other budget B350 motherboards, I would still pick this one. On to the memory, I'm keeping things generic with a crucial 8GB kit. Honestly, there is nothing too special about this set except for how expensive RAM has been getting coming in almost $60. But on a positive note, this does allow you to add in another stick in the future to get a total of 16GB of RAM. But still, you won't get anything special with this kit, it doesn't have a heat spreader design, and it's a generic green that older memory kits came at. But if you want to know more about why RAM prices and other components keep on jumping up in price, check out my last video and I think it'll explain why. Now onto the graphics card which is where I put most of the money in. Initially, I went with a 1070, but since I was revamping this build guide, I decided that sticking with the same card wasn't going to cut it. So for the graphics card, we were going with the GeForce GTX 1080. These things have been coming down price quite a bit since the 1080 Ti's release and the new Titans. So for $500, you are getting nothing less a top notch gaming performance. You should be able to play anything and nearly everything for a long time to come at pretty much whatever settings you want, you name it. But at least for the model here, we are going with the MSI Duke model that comes with 3 display ports, 1 HDMI 2.0, and a dual link DVI-D. It does have some RGB on it, and for $500, getting a 1080 will make any gaming experience awesome. Like I said before though, the model makes very little difference and just pick whichever is cheaper. It's a marginal difference in frame rates from model to model and the only thing that will really change are attempts when switching to different cooler designs. Moving on to storage, and I had to think about this for a while, but I decided to omit the SSD for the purpose that the build would have gone over budget and it's something that can be added on later. Granted, load times won't be as fast, but I'd much rather have a 1080 in my system than a 1070, or even if you could crossfire something like RX 4 or 580s, if you can find them in stock. But starting with the hard drive, I'm going to go with the standard 1TB Western Digital Blue. It's a 7200 RPM, and in this case meant to hold a majority of games and files. Not too much more to say about it, it's tried and true and pretty much the highest rated 1TB drive if that speaks for its quality. As for the SSD, that was a bit of a different story. Since SSD prices have been increasing, it's not likely to find a nicely priced SSD anymore, so we're technically left with two options. You could hold off a moment and when you get enough money for say a 240GB model, then pull the trigger, or go ahead and pay for one now rather than later. Neither option is wrong, but, for, but prices for components are expected to drop anytime soon, so it may be better to get a larger one now. The choice is still yours, but this way it keeps other parts of the build intact so we keep the same level of performance. Onto the case, going with the DIY PC DIY BGO1. It is a budget case coming in at $33, but for what it's worth, it definitely hits some good points. If we are talking features, you get a nice side panel window, water clean support of the 360 radiators in the front, a Mac GPU length of 400mm, and some room to upgrade to say the least. 
Also, CPU coolers up to 163mm are supported, so make sure to check that. We are going to use the stock cooler in this build, but for future upgrades, just keep that in mind. On the downside, construction of this case is not going to be the best of all time, and there are no regrommets, but I wouldn't mind this case just because of its features at a low price point. It also comes with three fans, one of them being a blue LED, so a fan splitter will be required. For the power supply, I'm going with the Seasonic M12-2-620 EVO. For $60, this power supply will easily power the rig and allow room for overclocking. Also, if you ever feel the need, this thing can support two 1080s and SLI and an upgrade to the processor such as stepping up to the 1700X. The total estimated draw of this entire system is around 400 watts, so everything checks out. It is only 80 plus bronze certified, but it is a fully modular power supply, making cable management a smoother process. In total, you get reliable quality alongside room to expand. The cables are also all flat and black, so that is an added bonus. And lastly for the operating system, I'm going to throw in a copy of Windows 10 for about $30. The way how this works is that you first buy a key off an online retailer like Kingwin or eBay, then download the media creation tool and follow the steps. There are plenty of videos that explain how to do this so don't worry. I did this with my rig so it is a safe process, but be careful when using eBay because it is a larger risk of getting scammed. However, as an alternative, you could run Linux which is completely free and allows for greater customization. Personally, I prefer Windows because games still run better on it for the most part, but it is your call. Either choice is perfectly fine. Anyways, there'll be a PC part breaker link in the description so you can purchase the parts or configure them how you see fit. If you have any questions, comments, or requests on what you'd like to see next, be sure to leave them down in the comments and I'll answer them. Also, if you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out the other uploads on the channel. Before I forget, the Steam Summer Sale is going on right now and ends July 5th, so if you haven't yet, be sure to log on and check out the deals. That's all, so thanks for watching and take care.